In the last video I showed you how you would troubleshoot a ground fault on an FCPS and I gave an example of a ground fault that was 3.2 ohms to ground. And I kind of stopped a bit when I was giving that example because um, I, was, I wasn't sure if that was a good time to get into the different types of resistance values you might get uh, and which ones were meant that there was a ground fault and which ones weren't and I decided not to get into it there so I want to get into it now. Um, so in the last video like I said you had 3.2 ohms. Um, let's say you have a ground fault in this circumstance you've already disconnected all the wires as you can see and you're ready to start metering them. Um, just to reiterate before I had mentioned there there's a couple ways to go about this first stage one pretty good way would be to just disconnect these circuits one at a time and wait for that ground fault light to go out um, that's fine there's nothing wrong with that but in this case we're pulling them all off we've seen the light go off so we know it's on one of those and now we're just gonna you know meter each one which goes pretty quick so we're gonna connect the negative lead to ground just like this right and then we're gonna take the positive lead and go from one wire get a reading, then the next, then the next, then, then the next. And we need to know which one, which which values we should pay attention to. Or we need, we need to know what those values mean, right? So let's say as you're going across, you get you get a few different readings. Um, let's say the first reading you get is 3.2, maybe something, something. There might be other numbers here. And then M, O. Oh. And then you get a few other readings if you know on some of the other circuits maybe you get some OLs hopefully you get OLs those are the that's probably the best case scenario then you get 3.2 something something KO or I'm sorry not KO but kilo ohms K ohms to ground and then you get our last example which is 3.2 ohms well the M stands for million the K stands for kilo or kilo, which is, which would be 1,000. So this second number is 1,000 times more resistance than the first number, right? If you were to write it out, it would be three, two. Oh, this pen! I hate this pen. Zero, zero ohms. This one's obviously just 3.2. This one up here would be three. Two, zero, 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 zero ohms. So even though there's maybe only this the same decimal place on the number, that second number means a lot. And that's probably obvious to most of you, but it can throw some people off. I've, I've, I've saw a post on a Facebook group I'm a member of recently where somebody had some reading to ground that was that had a an M next to it, and he thought that was his ground fault. Not only that, but he had his circuit still hooked up, which you don't read resistance when your circuit's hooked up because first of all, there's voltage presence and present, and second of all, even if the panel were dead, you're not just reading your circuit's resistance; you're reading that in parallel with any of the other circuitry that's on this board. And when you look at these boards, there's all sorts of resistors and all this other stuff. So you'd always disconnect your circuit before you take a uh, res resistance reading, but Okay, well, even if you know that this is 3.2 mega ohms or 3.2 kilo ohms, how do you know if that's a ground fault? How do you know if that's a problem? Well, it's a good question, and in some cases, um, you may not know. There are some manuals that I have seen that will give a reading for what their ground, th ground fault threshold is on the panel. The two numbers that I've seen... These were both for control panels, but I think it's it's uh, they're still useful for any anything that does ground fault detection. Uh, the first was 50k. I saw one that said anything below, right? So if you were higher than 50k, it wouldn't register. Um, and the the other was 100k. Now those numbers though are not on individual circuits. So let's say your threshold was 100k. If you had 200k on this one and 200k on that one, because of those resistances in parallel, that's probably going to be flirting with the threshold. 
And I would say that a good rule of thumb is if you have any reading to ground that's being measured if in the Ks, you should probably pay attention to it and you should probably worry about it. Now that's, you know, the closer that is to a meg, the less true that probably is. If you had 900K, you know, your panel may not go into ground fault, but you could probably find it and fix the problem. There's probably something going on there, right? There should not be continuity to ground on any of your circuits. Um, and so it's it's good to get that threshold. Maybe maybe you maybe you start thinking in terms of okay, well anything over 500k I need to worry about. But you know I, if it shows up as a k, I think you need to worry about it. Even the low megs, it's you know I, you don't like to see that. Um, now understanding the difference between like I said, ooh geez, drawing with the pen is way better than the mouse. Understanding the difference between the you know 3.2 ohms, the k ohms. And the m ohms is really important, but then you can kind of see. Well, if I, you know, if I had 3.2k, that's obviously a ground fault. No matter what, that's going to be a ground fault. But with the m, it it gets a little bit, you know, it's a little bit muddier. But that's a thousand times as many as this, which is a thousand times as many as that. So you're not talking about something where you're going to find copper touching ground. You're talking about maybe a zip tie against a bar joist or something is is too tight and those of you installing out there, please don't just zip tie cable to, to bar joists. Use bridle rings and you know do it professionally. But um, hopefully this clears that up some. Now this doesn't cover all ground faults. There's a whole bunch of different types of things that you'll see. Um, one other quick tip that I will give you, because one thing that you can that can cause ground faults is other voltage being introduced to your circuit. Um, the most common way that I can think of off the top of my head right now would be like some sort of a di device that requires separate 24 volt power. If that 24 volt power somehow comes in contact with your data, that's going to cause a ground fault. Um, but the, the tip is anytime you go to meter resistance, I may have said this before, and you get a, uh, Jesus, I suck at this. Anytime you go to meter resistance and you get a, a negative symbol, before whatever number spits out, to me that is almost always an indication that there is either voltage present on that circuit or that there's water on that circuit. And electrically, I don't know exactly why that is, but just from experience, I know that that's um, true. Another thing is sometimes you'll see a number, let's say you're, right now we've been talking about NACs, right? But let's say that instead of a NAC, you're talking about an SLC circuit and you pull the SLC circuit off and you get something like, um, I'm just making this up, but let's say it says negative 352 uh, kilo ohms. Well, the negative is is a dead giveaway that we have a problem, and to me, just from experience. Um, and I'm gonna say the first thing I would check is go because maybe you look at your panel and, and your threshold should be 100k from all the circuits, and and everything else is clear, reading OLs. Like, well, why is that showing up ground fault? This to me. The first thing in my mind goes to is I've got a wet module or something on the other side of my module of, a, of like a, a monitor module that's wet. So maybe a valve tamper is leaky and you know the contacts got corroded or something. So my monitor module, it's not directly touching my SLC, but through the circuitry of the monitor module, it's picking up the ground or the water. And so that can really muddy the reading. Um, that's maybe getting a little bit advanced, but it's just, like I said, a quick tip. So I think that's where I'm going to stop here.